Thanks. Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? It's your boy Chuck Diesel. We're back with another episode of Sake Sundays. And we're going to say a special shout out to God's Favorite Jewels for providing this for our guests. And this is a well-rounded individual here. I just had the pleasure of looking over his EPK. And he's a multifaceted artist and creator, producer. And I'll let him talk about himself. Go ahead and tell the people who you are. All right, my name is DeAndre Cole. Um, and I'm a director, I'm an actor, um, musician, an author. Um, I released six films in four months where I directed, started it, wrote it, produced it, cast it. Um, started with Trigger Troy, which was where I played a villain. It was a, a film about loyalty. And then um, just a few weeks ago was the premiere of Trendy, which is the, the poster that's behind us. And Denver's in it also. Um, and it's amazing. Uh, I got inspiration from uh, Wendy Williams. Uh, there was a time when Wendy Williams was about to get like beat up by Total. And I thought it was like, oh, my God, that's crazy. Like, why wasn't anybody helping her? So then it inspired me to write something like that. Um, so that's what Trendy was created. And then um, the Trendy premiere was great. Had over 300 people. It was amazing. Um, Dates and Honey, all, everybody. Uh, Mike Malone. It was it was great. Um, and then, like, maybe a week later, that's when I started writing my next film, which is called Neon Fashions, which is where I play a pimp, and he has a mental disorder, and um, he's, like, getting high of his own supply, and it's crazy. So it's, like, um, just to show people different parts of me. And also, just three days ago, I just came up with a book called Authentically Aware, True to You, and I'm so proud. Like, I just love it. Like, every day I read it, I'd be like, I can't believe this is me. Like, what? Like, I did this? How long is the book? Um, 30 pages because I do know that like these days that people got a short attention span so like 30 pages is good enough because they really really need to hear this message it's so important um and also in those six months I also founded my own company called Galaxy Blade Media which is a digital marketing company where we help businesses grow different things like that and also put the movies on there because a media company um and uh I've done music I have three mixtapes one called Escape the Ordinary, one called Crazy Love, one called Walk in Reality, and yes, yeah, R&B and pop. So just a lot of different things. Um, but I'm so excited. Acting is my primary focus. And yeah, I'm so excited to spread authenticity and self-awareness and stuff through my platform. Like that's what I really, really want because it's just too much, too many fights. It's too many bad things that happen where we can look on the bright side and we can uh, celebrate each other. That's what I'm going to do. So I do all these things so to gain attention to see what the bigger picture really is. That makes sense. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Oh, you said acting is one of your like core drives and passions right now. Oh, yeah, for sure. I oh. love acting. It's so much fun. How long have you been acting? Um, for seven years. Uh, seven, seven years. I moved from D.C. Uh, seven years ago from D.C. And uh, my first one was Thou Shall Not. Your first one? Um, first uh, film, Thou Shall Not. Was it one you were acting in or the first film you wrote? Or... No, no, no. This was, uh, it was a film that I was in. It was like Snapped, where I played a, a, I played a, a son that was helping his mom get rid of like a body. That was the first acting you had ever done? That was the first acting I ever did. And it was weeks later. It was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> I literally was on House of Cards, yeah. but it was like uh, just an extra role. Yeah. But I was um, reacting to him not being president anymore. Yeah. And I never watched um, House of Cards, by the way, but I just, I'm good at nuance. So he told us what we need to do. And right. he was like, oh, do what he's doing, y'all. Do what he's doing. And I, I was like, what? What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, I said, what I'm doing, this is the director. I'm, you know? Yeah. So then it made me want to be like, let me pursue acting because I really could be that name. Oh, what were your next steps <laughs> after getting that one opportunity? Um, then that's when I graduated Bowie State with a communications degree. All right. And then I said, I'm just going to leave. And then my parents, my family was pissed. They yeah. were so mad. Were it was like, DC? Yeah, from DC. They, yeah. they, they, they was like, they were like, why are you leaving? Like, cause I'm like the glue. I love to get people together. I love like hanging out and just, you know, being good to each other. And yeah, they was pissed. They was like, why are you just leaving? They should. So yeah. that was seven years ago now? That was seven years ago. Yeah. yeah. 2017. And I said, fuck, I just want to start over. Like, this is something I want to do. And now I know exactly what I want to do in life. But that didn't happen until maybe this year, where I already knew I wanted to be an actor. Now I know I want to be, uh, like, I want to be a mogul. 
Yeah, I said that. For sure. Like, I didn't know that that's what it's called when I'm different. <laughs> I was like, okay, what is it called? I'm like, I love doing all these things. Oh, uh, yeah. But, yeah. She One second. Let me stop this. It was me. I <laughs> uh, um, all right, so you're in DC, acted in the film, loved it, did the uh, extra work, loved it, yeah. and then you just got in the car, and moved to LA. Yeah, got in the car, moved to LA, and was like, "Fuck it, I got to, I got to go. I'm gonna start over." Yeah. Um, and then I just met my cousin, um, Ray Wine. He uh, produced two robots and Nasha, and I was like the only person I knew there. And then I got into music, so I kind of stopped doing acting for like a. I was like, oh, I just started. Let me, let me, uh, just, let me get into this music thing. I never thought I would ever have the courage to do some kind of music. Yeah. And I just started doing R and B and pop. I came up with mixed. Uh, How did that progression happen though? Like you just walked in the studio, made your first song. No, no, no. This is what happened. This is, I remember the exact moment it happened. I was on a cruise with my family, yeah. and like I was in the room, and I created the beat for my um, f- uh, first song called Victor of Life. Yeah. And I was like, dang, this is how you create beats? What? <laughs> I was like, what the hell? This is dope. I could do this. So I finished the beat and I said, oh, when I got out of here, I'm going to record the vocals. So then I did it, um, released that song. It touched you how to make beats. Nobody. I just started getting on the computer and just being like, oh, you, you're just trying to hear it? You're trying to Yeah. Just like nobody taught me self awareness. I just <laughs> taught it myself. No, I just no. was like, you know, I wish I wish somebody taught me this stuff, though. Like, but now, like, I, I just got on there and just started. You know, doing it, and then I was like, "Oh, I should come up with a mixtape." So then I released a mixtape. I recorded all of my closet at my parents' house. Did it when I was um, when I was back there. I was there for like a couple of months because of my eye. I got eye surgery in 2017, where I like messed it up. Uh, it was bad, and um, yeah. So I was there. And I was like, "Let me record this." Um, so I recorded it, released this mixtape, moved out here. Then I met Preston. PS mixed it. Shout out to PS mixed it. And he recorded my, I mean, uh, engineered my next uh, mixtape, which is called Crazy Love. And the first one, first song was called uh, Queen of the Summer. And then next, the second joint was called Deep Sea. And that's like one of my most popular songs, a hip hop type song and stuff like that. And that, that song is actually in uh, Trinity. So that's the song at the end. Um, so that, yeah, then I released Walk Me Out with you after that. Oh, what's your favorite song so far that you've made? Uh, probably Fast Life. Fast Life is uh, it's just personal to me because I just feel like you you, you can't. It's basically I, like in the song I say, I'm stepping out on my own. I don't know who to trust. I really don't know who to trust because people just be, they be here today, gone tomorrow, like too quick. <laughs> it's just, you know what I mean? Like who's genuine? And that's, no, why, that's one of the reasons I wrote that book too. Because it's just like, that's all I'm about. So like, it's not easy to deal with that all the time, you know? There's a stand in that chair if you want to use it. Yeah. But um, how do you usually go about writing your songs and like picking what to write about and stuff like that? Um, I just be like, if I think I don't, I don't usually always write my songs. Like I wrote like a couple of them, but not not a lot. Like I usually get writers and things like that because I love to collaborate with creatives and things like that. I just had a um, casting call like two weeks ago for actors. So um, I just love being able to create with other uh, creatives. So they created some good songs that I was just like, amazing. Like shout out to Lamar. He wrote Deep Sea. He wrote, he wrote like a majority of my music. And he in Philly. And yeah, we're we, we going to work with something new. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Great. Is I'm on here. Is it? I'm on like- it's yeah, yours is that. I didn't remember yours is mine. I turned it on, yeah, and I see it. I can't see much. Oh, shoot. Okay. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> so, how many uh, different writers have you collabed with? Actually, uh, probably like five or six. And how do you usually like, go about finding them? Um, shoot. Instagram, people in person, they'll be like, oh, I'm right. Because years ago, like, I just did music yeah. and acted, but like was acting in a little bit of stuff. Now I'm known for more acting because yeah. that's what I want to be known for. It's not because of music. It would be, it would be an actor that happens to do music. You know what I mean? So, uh, just like, just like my cousin, Nat King Cove, I'm like, he had his own show, right? And he also did music. So I was like, damn, like I could, you know, do that, you know, and, you know, I don't know. I can stand out on my or something, you know? 
So it had a big impact on you, like, choosing your direction? No. Uh, I mean, he's just a big inspiration because, like, he had his own show. And I'm like, I love film, stuff like that. Like, he's an inspiration because he's on, like, the Capitol Records building. He built, like, a legacy. Dude. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not just trying to be a flash in the pan. I'm trying to, like, be here stay here and be able to inspire because I got a message. Yeah. I got to remember this message ain't going to go away. It's not just like something I think about right now. It's a phase. This is truly who I am and I just you know, I love it. I, I, just, I was telling her in the car I was like, damn, I just can't believe this. Like, like this is really how I feel. Like, and I love it. Like, just being me and authentic and I don't care what people think about me. <laughs> like, it just feels so good. Is that a, something you feel like you had to like work to get to that? Point? Oh yeah. Oh god. I I didn't start being like this until I didn't look like this a year ago. Uh, a year ago, I didn't have as much confidence. Now I feel like I have a, way more confidence. Um, I'm more educated on a lot of things that just happened to God. Just sent me a. This is how you do it. Like it just. I'm telling you, it just happened. It's like I knew it, but so many things be going on in here. No, oh, yeah. That I just like I gotta structure it out. What do you feel like helped in becoming more confident? Um, shit, just telling people how being authentic and being self-aware can change your life and stuff like that. And how people just be telling me I inspire them all the time. Like, I'd be hearing this, like, two or three times a week, and I'd be like, damn, I'm just a, a regular guy. But I'm yeah. not a regular guy. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'd be like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just humble. I just sometimes I need to say the things because people won't be looking at me like Trey, you don't know your worth, and they're gonna be trying to step all over me like they have done my whole life. So many people. Oh yeah, that's why I'd be like, look, I got to show them who I am. Oh, yeah. and now it's like now it's overwhelming people. are like, oh shit. So, oh, do you feel like it's because you felt as if people had uh, stepped over you before? Yeah, they thought they were telling it. people to be more self aware. Yeah, and you know what? I've I, ew, I hate to say this, but yeah, like, and I, and I seen the way like my dad has been treated. Yeah, I seen the way I've been treated, and I've seen the way people that are nice get treated, and yeah. it's not fair. Because <laughs> because y'all just be like, oh, this and the other. But if you see a figure that is all about that, like, then you might be like, shit, you know, maybe I should look at myself. You know, yeah. maybe I shouldn't argue with my loved one today. Maybe I shouldn't do this today. You know what I mean? Like, the, I'm trying to fix that. Like, and I know that, that that's literally a way um, to do it, to make an impact like, like MLK, something like that. You know what I'm saying? You could do that. That's that's the type of stuff I'm trying to do. Is MLK uh, someone who just inspires you? Like, who are three people through history who inspire you? Well, Nat King Cole and Biggie. Biggie, I love Biggie. Like, I'm just trying to... Cause he his brat like he was just so different from yeah. everyone else going on at the time. You would never you don't never see nobody like that no more. Like he yeah. was just swagged out. He was just like, look, I don't care about what it is. Yeah. You know. And then um who's another person? I was gonna say Obama. Obama? Because like he did he was the first black president. Like, yeah. I just I when that happened, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, this is possible, but like so many <laughs> things are possible. Uh, I love when people create history and do things that people have never done. I'm gonna just say this, not to take away from Obama. You're right; he was the first person of you know African American descent to ascend. Yeah, but my man was also kind of groomed for it. Oh, he was. Yeah, really, like, not necessarily specifically for the presidential seat, but he went to school with Bush, bro. Like they went to the same private school. Obama's uh, stepdad, yeah. one of the like most wealthiest people, he owns oil, bro. He owns old oil. Oh wow! So I didn't Obama know that. had been since he was twelve, thirteen. Yo, yeah. I had, so I, I don't know. Like I'm not saying, you feel me? Yeah, he didn't do anything to show he could handle the position. Yeah, but he was already affiliated with people who could or could do it. entry a little nicer. Shoot, I'm sure he worked his ass off, but yeah. but you he but he still because if you feel me before he was in the seat, so he had to work, you know. That? But I don't want to say I'm taking away from Obama. No, no, no. But when I was like, wait, what? I found out what school he went to. And I found out what kind of school it was. It was a private charge school, bro. Like ship you off, like yo. I did not know he wrote books, bro. He was in the same private school. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, same private school. Yeah. Well. So like when he when he handed off the joint, they knew each other already. 
<laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, bro. He's like, oh, yeah, we gonna meet. It's mainly because of his dad. You feel me? Obama's stepdad being in the position of power. He was in, you know, oh. rich as hell. You feel me? Okay. Yeah. Damn, I didn't know that. Well, you, you told me something new. But yeah, he he inspired me because, yeah, that that's definitely something that's not easy. So, um, yeah, anything that's making history and being the first to do such a, like, a monumental type things, yeah. I'm all with. That's why I'm doing all this crazy shit. People think it's something wrong with because <laughs> I just wrote like full scripts the other day. I was just about to ask, like, all right, here, let's take this shot. Let's take this yeah. shot right here. This one's not sake. I mean, oh, let's get some cognac. Some cognac. All right. <sighs> oh, oh, shit. <laughs> no, I haven't taken a shot in a minute. Well, actually, I was just in DC with my family last week and we just took a shot. Family, okay. That was the first time that I took a. a Shot in a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry to do it to you, but there's one. We got two more. Two more. So, but um, yeah. So you were saying you came out with the films in the short amount of time. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering were they like boom, 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 like back to back, or were you like shooting and then editing and then shooting while the other one was in process? Like, what was that like? Um, three of them were filmed in two days. How? Because he's <laughs> <laughs> these are short films, and um, Den Denny Doll, she was in Edge of Power, that was one of them, and she was in um, Trinity, yeah. And yeah, the three just I wrote six scripts in a day before right. that, like a week prior. It was like, Look, I'm doing this, and it's not like I'm trying to like get some world record, it's just I be getting in the zone, yeah, and it just happens. And I have yeah. to put it out on the internet and I say, Look, this is what I did because oh, I'm looking at for myself. I'm like, Look, Trey, you did this. Because I sometimes feel like out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll be like, oh, man, you know, maybe I'm, but I'm not doing that, Nick. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So basically, I just start putting that in there. And I was like, wait, what? Six? I'll be forgetting to say I did six scripts in a day. But, you know, three of those films was in two days. Uh, Trick and Troll was first. Then at the very next month later was the experience, the masquerade. And I had a masquerade ball for that. Yeah. Um, all three events had. 300 people. I just was like, wow, baby, come What's the eight. turnaround time from shoot to final edit? Um, like a month. All right. Yeah, it's because we do the table read usually on a Thursday. And then on a Saturday, that's when we film the whole movie. Yeah. Like, uh, it takes 10 hours. If it's a two minute film, then that can take maybe three hours. I was about to ask next, how long are they? Oh, yeah. So, like, for example, Edge of Power was like, that took us like an hour and a half. That was like a three minute film. All right. Uh, Marco Polo took us one, yeah, hour and thirty. Yeah, took like an hour and thirty, and then Radio Dot took us like two hours. So there's like a lot of ones that to be like fast, or it depends on like the actor if they can get the lines. No, or yeah, I yeah. um, feel like oh, this is good enough. The nuance is good enough. Yeah, yeah. acting. How do you because, go about finding your actors? Um, I always just meet random people and they yeah. always be like, you know what? I'm an actor. And, this and, other. and I'd be like, oh, cool. Yeah, so then I get the contact. Hey, yeah, let me get the contact. So yeah. I literally go to workshops or places that you're supposed to learn stuff. And then they, um, I'll tell them, yeah, look, guys, I've done six months before myself. And everybody be like, oh, my God. And then at the end of the joint, they come up to me. Yeah. You give me their contact. I'm like, thank God. Because then I get more actors to be able to get a chance. Too with different things like that, because of course you know they'll be getting a chance to Oh no, yeah. you know, but they they share the dude. It's a small nuance, and it's a lot of not even that they're not giving them. It's just it's a hundred people looking for it. You feel me? Yeah, it's happening. It's, you want up a hundred, and oh, that's them on the white side. Like a hundred is low. Exactly. Like I, you post casting calls. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So you just need the submissions. Uh, yeah, I know you've gotten the submissions where you were yeah. like. I only need three people. Exactly. Like, um, there was a lot of them well, for the last case I called, but I saw one person that is going to be in Neon Confessions now. Yeah. And that was just a whole open thing. So now that, that just that just showed that anybody can end up being in the films if you, you know, got the talent, you got the communication skills, because I can't deal with the, um, like, actors that don't got no communication. Because I'm like, I'm, I'm doing that. Um, I'm putting it together. I have so many things. I'm running a company, writing scripts. If I need to know that this is going here, that like type stuff. No, that's why communication is good. And then I'm a Gemini too. So I was like, you know, communication. Uh, you big on astrology? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you believe in it? I believe in it. Yeah, because it'd be saying really what people be like. But you know what? My my dad is Gemini. He ain't nothing like a Gemini. 
I told him, I said, you're nothing like a Gemini. Like, I'm the a true Gemini. It's not a purpose. Like, <laughs> I'm the true Gemini. And yeah, like, my dad is so chill. Just chill as hell. And I just want to be like that. I truly do. I yeah, really wish. Hey, you feel me? God, maybe my son or my daughter, they're going to be like that. They're going to be chill. Because so, I'm just like, damn. What do they feel like to be chill? Like, you don't got no chill? No, I don't get time to chill. I just, you know, every two hours is still internally. That's true. You're right. You're right. I still be, you know, I still be high as a motherfucker with some weed or some shit, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I do some edibles and shit. And that still was like down a little bit, but then that brain is still going. Though. It's still going and shit. So I'm just like, every two hours, I have to be um, doing something towards trying to, you know, like whether it's applying to jobs or, you know, applying to a, a, a acting gig, writing a script or thinking of an idea for a script. Yeah. Um, putting another process into my company, um, looking for an investor or something. Like, things that I need. I have to be productive because there's so many things to get done. No, yeah. Right now, it's just me and Den Denny Doll and, and we're just, you know, it's we're going to expand and I'm excited. It's just, uh, this is just the beginning of something that's truly going to be remarkable. And what are your like days like normally and like your scheduling? Um, shoot, every day just we'd be just trying to text each other like, oh, this thing's some good, did this thing's get done too? And then just trying to like get it done and get on the phone, make some kind of connection to do how to we we don't know how to pitch. I mean, we know how to pitch, but like, no, who can get the person? Like, let me get in the room because right, you're going, right, right. you're going to be like, well, shit, let's just, come on. It's like before you get to the actual pitch, you just gotta feel me. Tell them what's up and break that. They got a little interest. You feel me? So no, yeah, yeah. yeah it's so. the different people is different. It's like if you want to work with an artist and get. Yeah, you feel me in the studio. Work with the producer. It's exactly. different than if you're trying to get somebody to actually pay. You, you exactly you know, yes like, yes so, yeah no or at least get that opportunity you know right, at least get presented least, to you in a in fashion it. where yeah it's not cold right exactly well, where it's like or, uh, i'm interested in hearing what you have to say exactly <laughs> like i'm interested in hearing you and seeing that you could change the world yeah let me see your book I'm yeah exactly, exactly. Let let me, see. like let me see you feel oh, me? once you get to the let me see part yeah half the work is done because they're interested exactly because and you know why it's you know, it's just one thing to talk about it, but it's one thing to be about it. Yeah. You just got to be about it. And you ain't got to talk about it no more. And that's what I'd be doing there. I said, I got to do it. I just got to, I just got to be like, look, you know what? No, next time I'm coming out. What do you think, like, cemented that mentality into you? Because people, the way people treat me, the way people, I'm not saying that people got to be like, oh my God. No, yeah. But it's like, give me some, give me some respect. Like, people just be like, not understanding my boundaries like just, they only understand they think i'm just some monster because i put a boundary up and i don't like that but it's um that's why I wrote, one of the reasons i wrote a book because a lot of friendships had to end because of boundaries and things uh, that boundaries they that be, what? Try, you know just things like oh i can't always come to this place or i can't always do this or i can't always do that um they ask for a favor um and you say oh i can't do that they get mad at you yeah. like you owe them something yeah and even if I did, it's just like, uh, we could use our words. Yeah. You know? And that's, it just, that's, I don't know. That shit is, I don't like it, but <laughs> I try, I detached myself. I detached myself. Yeah. I remember. You, you have to feel it. You feel me? It's okay to feel it because like you're saying, that inspired you to be like, well, it's yeah. in my best interest and it's what I have to do and that created the beast. If you didn't actually feel it and just straight away detached, you wouldn't have necessarily yeah. gotten to the point of, all right, now how do I move past it? Exactly. You would have ignored it. You feel me? Exactly. I had to go through it. Like, you had to address well, it. I, had to go I don't through. like this feeling. I don't like that shit, yo. So in order to prevent it, yeah, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Exactly. As right. opposed right. to just hook it away until the next time it pops out, and then I'm like, I don't like this feeling, and I ignore it again. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, damn, I think I feel that shit, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, am I tripping? Yeah. Time for the second. For the second one? Yeah. Socket. So soccer? No, I'm coming back. That was better. Oh, shit. It got some flavor. Oh. Wait, is that cinnamon? No. I have a hint of 
So he was allergic to cinnamon? No, I just hate cinnamon. I was going to say, my nigga, tell about the show. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. the dye on the cast. <laughs> <laughs> like, who got an EpiPen? Who got the Epi? <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, my God. We say that in, in, my, in my second film, uh, The Experience. We'll be like, get the EpiPens. <laughs> because somebody chokes on their food. Yeah. And one of them, you got to see it. Oh, my God. No, it's it's story. I got to shit. It was like, it was, oh, I couldn't believe it. I can't even watch it. It's not because it looks so real. Yeah, it looks so real. Yeah, you see, you seen it. Yeah, you seen it. That reminds but, me, uh, my mom uh, saw me get choked out by a white person, bro, on stage. What? Why you get choked? Huh? On stage, on stage. But what happened? Oh. I was acting, bro. Uh, oh, 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 I oh, I for real. Oh, he was like, no, on stage. Yeah, it was just she couldn't watch the shit. She couldn't just, like shake the dude's hand and talk to him after the show, bro. What? He was yeah. acting. She couldn't watch him. She couldn't actually. I mean, she couldn't. She couldn't handle it. Damn. Oh. Like, but that was too real. Yeah, that, yeah, no. It well, shit, real. When it feels like that, <laughs> I mean, it was effective or something like. <laughs> like that means it was a good scene. Exactly. The actor did his job. Yeah, the actor did his job to get the you know the nuance because that's what it was. He was like, oh, does it really feel like it hurt? Yeah. Did the person really choke? But how did they? Like, I want to see the scene now. No, no, no. He didn't really choke. No, no, no. I'm saying. But he did. Like, oh, my God. You have like, to see the scene now. Like, what? Yeah, because, like, did he we have himself choked for real. Or was he just like. You know, actually, I don't know what, what I'm saying. saying. Now I'm curious. And yeah. I'm like, 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 Yeah, I want to know from you. It's like, what were you doing in your head? Yeah, like, Xander is so convincing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to make it so convincing, because I'm telling you, that was really impressive. Um, So I always told him. Um, but yeah, that is the experience. So if you go on my Instagram, which is D A N C R E underscore underscore it'll be in the uh, bio oh so all of that oh watch the film yeah and it's all six films on there and i also have another film called headspace that's out that i play a boss in it so uh, that's on there too that oh with the production company how did you like all right actually for the, my whole just like wrapping around so you produce you make music you act and how did you like decide to progress to bigger you feel me okay i can act but I'm going to write this. Okay, I can write this. Now I'm going to cast and direct it. You feel me? Yeah. Like, taking it to the next... And taking it to the next level? Yeah, and actually going through with it. Because a lot of... Everybody, bro, has... I have something I do, and I dream about it being on this level. Yeah. But they don't even start taking the steps the step to initiate it. Yeah. So it's like, once you write the script, you have to get the idea, inspiration, motivation to yeah. cast it. Exactly. Once you cast it, where's the team? You feel me? Yeah. And then after filming one or two, team. did you decide, all right, that instead of looking for people, I'm going to build a production team? Like, yeah, so it was the psychology around the development and deciding, all right, we got to do this on the next level. Yeah, like I usually, usually write the script, then I cast for it maybe the next week after that. And then I just put t- everything together, seeing if I can get a DP, seeing if I can get an um, editor, see if I can get a um, cinema photographer, a producer. I don't have all the people that usually are on sets, like the grip, yeah. all these people that have all these different things. Uh, Cause I don't get the budget for that. Usually all these films are done with no budget, yeah. no team. It's just creatives per project. Yeah. And I absolutely love all the creatives that I've been able to collaborate with. I'm so thankful. Um, but yeah, I just usually text them all and be like, look, this, 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 this. So it's just like piece so, by piece. I bet. Piece by piece. I want to write a script now. Let me write it. Right, yeah. I've been written. Let me get some actors. All right, now I have actors. Let yeah, me get a camera. All right, I got a camera. No, no, no. Then you do the location before the camera. Yeah. And as soon as you do that location, you're good. Okay, what day can I do? Do you know your mind? Okay, cool. Let me do that day. Let me find this location before you know who's shooting? Oh, uh, yeah. I always find the locations first. Like currently for Neon Confessions, we're still about to do the production, but we still got to find the strip club and we got to find the Cadillac. So as soon as we jump to it, this is a question that's not asking for your podcast. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter. Shit. Yeah. No, no, I'm thinking, you feel me, logistical shit. Oh, you want to do a strip club? I was at a strip club one time for a show before you have Oh, to, nice. You feel me? I don't know oh, shit about it, though, is that I have to reach out. Like, you haven't seen it. You feel, I mean, it's a club for sure. It's a strip club for sure. Okay. I and mean, it's a set for sure, but I don't know anything about it's a set? how to book it. Like, none of that. Okay. Yeah. Is it um, Gesture? I don't even remember the name. Because that's the one I'm talking about right now. Open Gesture. It's not far. It's like, like, like 15, 20 minutes from here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and Probably that- Gesture. It's off of a freeway. Bare elegance. It's Bear in between like Santa Monica oh. to here. It's like if you're leaving Santa Monica, coming here. I was there like two years ago mm-hmm. and then leaving work. I work in Santa Monica. I drove by it one day. Like my shit rerouted me because yeah. of traffic. 
And I was like, yo, they close check. <laughs> so it's close, but I don't, I'd have to go through my email, which is why I was like, it's all good. I shouldn't even say this right now because it's, no, it's fine. It's totally close. <laughs> but, <laughs> but well, no, it's good to know. I need to strip something. I'm already back. Sure, well, I was going to strip something before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. You feel me? So it's cool. Maybe we were trying to use uh, Snoop Dogg's loose strip club. Right. We were yeah, trying to yeah, make it. What's it called? Player's Club? The Player's Club. Yeah, we were trying to use Player's Club in this joint. Yeah. Where Deja Vu used to be, I think. I don't know. I've seen the it's lights. It's downtown by the freeway. Oh, you swear Deja Vu used to be? Yeah, that's what I heard. That's where, yeah. Deja oh, Deja sure. You know that. Deja Vu is the big joy. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Have a seat. We got to call him. Hit him up. See, see. Yeah. Uncle Snoop. Crazy girls. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> see if they uh, do that. But yeah, it's just a... And if we don't get the strip club, then we have to improvise. Because that's what we got to do. When you don't have no budget, you ain't got no team, you just got to improvise. What, I'm going to wait for the money to come? No. The money going to chase me. And that's what I make it happen right there. You feel me? Not everybody has that mindset. I need this. I need this. I need this. The very first, first or second podcast I did, I was with two artists and just talking about getting stuff done. Yeah. And one of them was like, I have to get the budget right, get the vision right, get this and get that and X, Y, and Z. And I was like, or you can work with what you got. Exactly. It's like feature films have been shot on iPhones. iPhone 5, bro. I, I, I went to the theater. I went to the movie theater and watched a movie that was shot on an iPhone 5. What? Fully cinematic and everything, bro. This is like 2016, 2017. iPhone, on iPhone, bro. Look, when we get off here, I'll Google it and show you it. But yes, it was preview or not previewed it was premiered in theaters it wasn't like all theaters because yeah. it was for um like a film fest yeah and it was one of the first feature films to be shot on the iphone wow it was six seven years ago that's so always like it's not a matter of yeah getting exactly what is the biggest and best and i think i need that's true. but a matter of figuring out what works for what i need yeah. and maximizing on the opportunity exactly Right, no, you're right, you're right. And that's why I just be like, look, let's be, get this, you know, because these are short films, but I treat them, they're all on IMBD, too. Yeah. Right? So you go on IMBD, and you get your credits, and look us up, and everybody, yeah, yeah it's just, because it's legitimate. It's, um, it's just, I'm doing these things very fast because I got no patience. And I just, I feel like I have something to prove because these people, <laughs> some people. Who are these people? Some of these people, some things. Some of some, some people. They will be, uh, you know, they don't, they don't understand the the type of things that I'm capable of, like the things that I love to do and I'm gonna do. Yeah. So it just kind of litify, like you know what? All right, it may not supposed to be this way, like this this friendship or this family thing. Uh, but okay, cool. You don't believe in me? Let me show you what the hell I can do. I'm not gonna say anything else. No, yeah. You know what I mean? If you if I got the platform, God made me the vessel to success. So and well, self awareness, and I'm gonna do it. Let me just stop talking. You know? How do you settle on the words authenticity and self awareness? Because one, just self awareness is a big, you feel me, concept. Yeah. And it's like some people say self awareness, you can be self aware overly, where you're anxious and self conscious and awkward. You feel me? Uh-huh. Or you, you like, I'm thinking about everything in this situation, where the cup is, I'm sitting, how my hair, I'm self-aware of what I'm saying, how I'm saying it to the point where I'm not even being myself. Yeah, because that, that's, that's, that's why it takes authenticity exactly. and self-awareness exactly. that's because authenticity is self-awareness when you really look it up, because it's uh, having the courage to be able to be yourself yeah. and be able to um, have that, uh, what is it called? Uh, the, the name of it when you do something good when it's and nobody's even watching you, integrity you, yes you have integrity <laughs> and you got all of that and yeah. i mean self-awareness comes with that and when you're self-aware then you're not afraid to be yourself you're just like you know what whatever i may be this way or whatever but you know what i'm embracing it and yeah everything gonna be fine and if this person does not accept it i will be like look this is the way i feel give them an opportunity but if they don't then it's like, what, what you still standing here for? You know, yeah. Like, you know, that's just goodbye. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just, that's just how I feel. And I feel like everybody can carry themselves like that. It would be less fights. The but people like with the right people. Not to negate anything you're saying with that, 
is like with the self awareness aspect of it, yeah. is like you have to also be aware of how your authenticity is perceived and affecting others. You feel me? Because, what you mean by that? Oh, if I'm completely being authentic, I can easily say some shit that I don't think is offensive. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, rude. You see me? That's why it's that's other TV and self-aware. self put it together. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You gotta be real. Like, you gotta be real. Like, but even then, you have to be self-aware enough to be able to check yourself. Yes. You feel me? Because you could be self-aware yes. and be like, hmm. Yeah, and exactly. Like, show me. But, but you don't be able to be big enough to say, maybe that person would be hurt if I said that. Or I was wrong. Yeah, you feel me? Exactly. Exactly. So if they are just self-aware and authentic, a lot of things will be okay. Um, and that's what authentic, authentic, authentically aware, true to you is about. I needed to come out with this book. It, it had to come out. I, I know that I'm in the middle of releasing Neon Professions, but guess what? I, I don't care. I'm just like, look, hey, see, just I, and like people need to see this book today. Because it's, it's it's my journey. You get to learn about me. It's not just about me. It's about authenticity and my brand and what I'm standing for. And I said, if, if fame is coming or whatever it is, it should be about authenticity and self-awareness. It's not about me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's truly how I feel. And I swear, I'll tell that to anybody that shake my hand, talk to me. And how would you, like... I can't talk to people that's not self-aware. Or how would you lead somebody into being more self-aware? If someone wanted to ask you... You know, I need help or I'm not sure if I am. What are some tips or suggestions you can give me to work on my self-awareness? It would depend. It would depend on, like, if they tell me what's what they think that there's wrong with them. Like, what you think is wrong with you? What do you think? That, some like, people just they have no clue. Or they're just like, all right, let's bounce. Well, have I heard 10 different social interactions <laughs> to my like. You're right. In relationships to my work relationships, and yeah. none of them are anywhere near, near self awareness. Or where I think that they should be in situations, I have conversations, and the outcomes of them, I don't understand. You know what? I should just <laughs> <laughs> start with thinking before you speak. Exactly. Think before yeah. you react, you have to think and understand what you're thinking about before you actually open your mouth. And talk. Yeah. Exactly. That's you can like, let me. Off. Yeah, and it's not like walking on eggshells and stuff like that, but you got to understand who the person you're dealing with first. You got to be like, let me see what the person is first. And then, oh, can they handle that type of stuff? Okay, then maybe, maybe now you see they're a little timid. Uh, okay, let me approach it this way. You don't have to be a social cues type of guy, but it's like you have to understand what can be said, what can't be said, and be authentic about it. If you don't feel like you're comfortable in talking to anyone, about stuff or asking them a question or something, then that probably should be somebody that you should even interact with. But if you're saying that, like, uh, somebody... Because your question was... If someone just wanted to know how to be more self-aware, what would you tell them? Oh, I would tell them for sure read my book first. I would say, look... <laughs> <laughs> go download it. Click the link in the bio. Yes, yeah, link in the bio. It's there. The ebook is nine ninety nine on Amazon, Kindle. I'm just on Barnes & Noble, all the places that people can buy books. Yeah. Um, and you could read that. And it also, you would see how social cues are. You could see how a facial gesture or something can, like, show you, oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't say this. And maybe I should... You got... It's 2024. You have to be this way. If you're not this way, this is the type of shit that gets you canceled. You know what I mean? So it's like, get canceled with your family, whether it's canceled with your marriage, cancel with anything. You know what I'm saying? If I really get into this joint, you know? I, um, I don't know. I just really do think if they read the book, though, I think that they would be like, okay, you know what? All right, maybe I take from this. I can approach it this way. They At least they're approaching it a different way. It's not even that long. It's not even long. It's only 30 pages. Yeah. It's not even long. So... Um, I do think that they could do that. And if they ain't got the money to do it, to walk, to do the book, it, it hit me up. I can send you a, a copy or something. I, you know what I'm saying? The audio book. Even. Get you. And I'm doing the audio book tomorrow, actually. Mm -hmm. So they can hear me. They can hear my voice and be like, this is coming from the DeAndre Cup. You know what I'm saying? So, but not nah, like, I think it could work. What you think? Well, the authentic, like me telling them to do my book. To look at my oh, I mean, no, that's I think that's for 101. <laughs> no, but no, I, it's like, it's like, I, heard it down for you. I gave you the answer, go get it. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, and I feel bad for saying that, 
Like, I feel bad for saying, just go get my book. That's not who I am. It's not trying. I'm trying to get a dime from you. I, um, I truly want to help because it can help them. And they will appreciate that. They're going to be like, wow, I remember when I was 20 or 18 and I read that book and it was like, it really changed my life. They're going to remember. So, yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Oh, you have anything that you want to tell the people? Oh, yeah, no. So, uh, yeah, Authentically Aware is true to my heart, and I'm so excited. Um, I can't believe I was able to do all these films and do these, this book. Like, what? Who come out with books? I'm just like, just like me. Like, wow. I, I just, I, I don't be, I don't give myself enough credit. Yeah. And that's why I talk my shit when I can. Why don't you give yourself credit? Because I try not to offend people. I don't want to offend people like, by, I've done this, I've done this, and da 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 No, it's not like tough. Like, oh, I'm it. Yeah, it's like, I could, and it's like, no, it's not like, stuff will show, uh, proof is in the pudding, and I just, it's about the character, right? Like, who I am. You know what I mean? So many allegations, so many different things always come out about all these celebrities, and I just be thinking, damn, like, maybe if they, like, had some kind of authenticity, self-awareness, somebody around them that taught them, Shit, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't do this shit or something like that. Yeah. They wouldn't even be getting canceled. They wouldn't be getting it. And that's what made me want to write this book. Because I said, look, I'd be goddamn if that happened to me. Because I said, look, this is the person I am. And you know, only a lot of people around me that's like authentic and self aware. I can't deal with it no more. But I just want to uh, do that and make sure that people can avoid conflict. Because it'd be sad sometimes. I'd be like, damn, like, this shit all could have been avoided. And I don't know why I feel like that. But I don't know. You feel like you could tell when people aren't being authentic? Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. But I know that it changes, too. I've seen it change. They don't believe that I'm this guy. They don't believe it. They're very like, you ain't that good. You ain't a good guy like this. I've heard it all the time. But some people are consistent in their behavior. They're consistent in everything that they do. And I'm one of those people. So the guy's about to show that. <laughs> I'm really excited for that. Yeah. What do you think is a tell sign that someone's being authentic? Um, uh, I would say like if they like hating on you or trying to like bring you down in a kind of in kind of a way, not even a, not even on no sensitive type shit. Because I'm not a cheesy ass nigga either, but I'm still you know speak the real shit. But I I just you can tell like I just know social cues. I know people. I know when people cool. I know when people just be like, just what this nigga tell him? You know what I mean? I've seen it. People be saying it sometimes too to me. And I'll be like, shit. Go read my book. <laughs> Start throwing books. <laughs> She's silly. silly. He was like, all right, this conversation is over here. <laughs> You're like, here you go. I'm, and, and I'm not even saying I'm like the most self aware person of all time. That's not even what the fuck I'm saying. I'm just trying to say that it could be way better in this world. It could. And I'm okay. And that's why I'm here. No, I feel like a lot of people aren't necessarily self-aware. It's not even that they're not self-aware. It's just that their emotion overrides any part of them that wants to admit fault. You feel me? So yeah. it's like this happened and I did X, Y, and Z. Yeah. As opposed to saying, how did that affect them? They said, why did I do it? And then they justify it based out of their emotion. Oh, you're right. I, was, I was mad. And that's why I did it. I was like, all right, well, it was fucked up, but I was mad. It was, I was mad. <laughs> right, I was mad, but you know what? I learned from that, and now I should. You feel me? Like, I was that. mad, and I shouldn't have done that. And, and I, I now know. You feel me? I now know. And even if they do know, know, it's saying, yeah. allowing the ego. To but it's like, no ego to even be. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the thing. Yeah. People involve their ego first because the ego tells people them. are so hurtful. Exactly. And the people are so hurt. Yeah. Yeah. So they lead with the ego because the ego tells them so they're weird. okay. You feel me? Like I boost my ego. I feed that. And as long as it's good, I can appeal to the world yeah. and it's good. If you start poking at something that makes me question myself, the ego now falters. Oh, yeah. And the people. ego was the only thing holding, holding it together. <laughs> so if the ego starts to falter, my whole inside is weak now. So I can't admit nothing you're saying. Uh oh. Even if it's true. You got it. You got it. <laughs> See, that's when they really, now, how many you can agree, they, that's when they should really be 
No, for sure. But that's just <laughs> that's so many people, bro. They it's, even sometimes I I consider myself very self aware. Yeah, but at the same sure. time, my emotion is what I feel first. Yeah. So even yeah. in being in a conversation, I have my feeling sensations first. Right. Right. So it's like I gotta think about what I just said sometimes. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, because right. I'm responding based we're already in this interaction. Yeah. I feel a certain way about it. And now my words are coming out. Right, right, right. Exactly. But it's, it, 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 you know, you gotta, be able, you gotta be able to have, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you so can't be too sensitive to at the same time. I'm not telling people to be extremely sensitive. No, for sure. It's just so many people get so hurt so fast. And it's because it's just human decency. Certain things. It's like, you know, you, you got so much hospitality. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's just, it's an example of certain things. Like, same with me. I would do the same shit. I'm like, this is, you know, and it just, it just, it shows in little things. Like, things that you don't even expect. I didn't expect none of this. I didn't, you know what I mean? I did. I was like, you know, come be able to help me. You know? So, yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. So, but it's, it's about being humble. It's about a lot of shit. It's a lot of, yeah. No. Well, I got a couple of books to write. I feel it. I feel it. Yeah, but they're all on the same trajectory. It seems like it'll help people. Yeah, I really truly want. I tr- I really do. I don't know what it is. I just I fr- I know it's possible. No, it is. Well, there you go, people. Be self aware. But be authentic and be true to you, and yeah. work hard for what you want. Yes. Um. D a n t r e underscore underscore. Uh, and then Denny. <laughs> 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 underscore Denny dog y'all seen it before <laughs> hey, let's do an official sign off uh, alright everybody thank you for tuning in with us it's boy Chuck Diesel shout out to Sake Hi and the guy's favorite jewels tap in with us tell them where they can find you uh, D-A-N-T-R-E underscore underscore and then all my movies in there books go fund me <laughs> it's Denny dog hi y'all Underscore the dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>